Hey there, VC. I'm Gary, and this is Physical Format Rock and Roll. So I wanted to talk about the uh, Get Back documentary from Peter Jackson, like a lot of people are doing out there. But uh, I'm not going to do an in-depth analysis. Instead, I just want to give uh, 20 fairly quick observations uh, that struck me as I watched the movie. Uh, some of my friends out there in the vinyl community are already doing pretty good reviews of the movie. Uh, so, you know, I would definitely go check them out, uh, including my buddy Jeff Witcher does a good one. So anyway, I'm just going to read through these. One, the subtitles were greatly appreciated on this because at times you couldn't hear what they were saying. And also I liked the fact that they would put people's names on there and what they did. Two, Billy Preston was a shot in the arm for the band. Uh, they all seemed to perk up when he came to play. Three, Yoko Ono should never be around a microphone. Four, Paul McCartney is crazy talented. In case you didn't know that, the guy plays everything. Uh, next, Michael Lindsay Hogg, uh, the director, he is incompetent. Uh, he talks about going to foreign countries to film, uh, getting them on a ship, it's like he, uh, he had no control over the situation and his plans were fairly silly. Next, uh, the band, not as dour as we might have originally thought. They still really liked playing together. They had a lot of fun and uh, especially when they were doing cover songs. Next, Ringo Starr likes to put towels on his snare drum and his floor tom to dampen the sound and used it pretty much throughout the movie, including the rooftop concert. Next, I love Paul's smile when they are up on the rooftop and he turns around and he sees that the cops are there, that grin that he has, awesome. Next, these guys smoke way too much, don't they? Uh, everybody around them is smoking. They are smoking all the time. I think a lot of it was peer pressure. Next, Linda's daughter, Heather, seemed like kind of a nuisance uh, when she was in the studio there. Everybody had to put up with her that day, but uh, a nuisance. Next, uh, when they were on the rooftop concert, why did they do Get Back once again? Uh, at the end there, I feel like, you know, they'd already done it a couple times. Why not throw in another song? Why not do one of George's songs or something? Anything besides that. Uh, next, Glenn Johns looks like a creepy character from a Russ Meyer film. When I see that guy, he just gives me the creeps. He looks so weird. Next, Ringo Starr farts and owns up to it. Next, Paul, I feel like, is almost forced into a leadership role uh, in this film. Um, it's like, you know, everybody kind of sits around. They don't know what to do. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of times he knows what he wants, but he's not very good at always telling people how to get it. Uh, he doesn't always do a good job at expressing it. Sometimes he just... Talk, what, it, what he says doesn't even make sense. And if you were a musician trying to understand that, you'd be like, I, what are you saying? Next, Paul and Ringo seem to have a very good relationship. Actually, Ringo seems to have a pretty good relationship with everybody. And I like the parts where like Paul and George help him out with songs and they, or they show him different chords and stuff. That, that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, probably one of the best parts of this whole thing is seeing those songs come together, right? getting to be a fly on the wall. Uh, you know, I mean, I realize this was probably boring to the casual fan, but to, you know, to people like you and me, this was just great. Seeing these songs come together, even though this, you know, this film was about, what, eight hours long altogether. But, you know, I would love to see this done with other bands. Uh, if there's footage out there like that, you know, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, The Stones, uh, really in-depth uh, in the recording studio. That would be awesome. Next up, one Hare Krishner, two Hare Krishners. Were there going to be any more? Was anybody else a little frightened at some point? You know how the one day there was the one guy just sitting there like that. The next day there was two of them. I thought, oh my God, are they going to keep multiplying or what? Those guys are creepy. Uh, next up, 
You see George's frustration trying to get his songs into the band. You know, you had that monopoly there uh, with Paul and John uh, always coming together to work on, you know, they had their own songs, but they worked together on them all the time. And George, they work on his songs, but not as much. But I also think he took the wrong uh, method there where he like, you know, throws a little fit. He quits the band for a while. I feel like he should have just said when he brought a song in, hey, look, Paul, pick up your bass. Uh, Ringo, get back there on the damn drums. John, here you go. All right, guys, here's how this song goes. We're doing it. Come on, George. Next up, uh, you know, the Beatles probably didn't really like having Yoko Ono there uh, hanging around all the time, but they did a pretty good job of not letting it become too much of a distraction. Uh, it's really not as big an issue as what we have always believed. I mean, yeah, you could tell they, they probably didn't want her there, but at the same time, after a while, I think they just kind of ignore the fact that she's even there. I mean, including John, until Yoko has to, you know, keep poking at him. And he has to turn around. Oh, hi, <laughs> Yoko, you're still here. Next, finally, Thanksgiving 2021 is going to probably go down as the day that one of the greatest musical documentaries ever uh, was released. And music geeks like myself and you who are out there watching enjoyed spending all this time learning all this stuff uh, about the Beatles. I thought it was great. And uh, if you haven't seen it, you definitely need to watch it. If you are a music geek, if you are not, you're going to get a little bit bored. But Peter Jackson did a fantastic job. So remember, I am on Facebook and Twitter. I'm uh, Gary, Physical Format Rock and Roll. Until the next time, my friends, I will see you down the road.